we are asked to complete the table below. Looking at the table, in the first column we have time, which we will call seconds. Then we have r double prime of t, which we will call the acceleration vector, followed by r prime of t, which we will call the velocity vector, and then we have r of t, which we will call the position vector. Before we complete the table, let's look at an example. Let's assume we have a car driving down a straight road and the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Remember the acceleration indicates the change in the velocity. So if the starting velocity is 50 meters per second, then the velocity one second later is going to increase by 10 meters per second because the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, 50 plus 10 is 60, and therefore one second later, the velocity is 60 meters per second. Now let's assume the velocity is 30 meters per second. If the starting position is 20 meters, then the position one second later is going to be 30 meters further. 20 plus 30 is 50. The new position one second later is 50 meters. The velocity indicates the change in the position. So now going back to the table, let's fill out the row for t equals three seconds. Over this one second time period, we can see the acceleration in the x direction is two meters per second squared. The acceleration in the y direction is three meters per second squared. And the acceleration in the z direction is one meter per second squared. And the starting velocity is the velocity at t equals two seconds, where we can see in the x direction, the velocity is eight meters per second. The velocity in the y direction is nine meters per second. And the velocity in the z direction is six meters per second. So focusing on the starting velocity of eight meters per second, we know for the next one second, the acceleration is two meters per second squared, which increases the velocity by two. Eight plus two is 10. At t equals three seconds, the velocity in the x direction is now 10 meters per second. The starting velocity in the y direction is nine meters per second. And then for the next one second, the acceleration is three meters per second squared. This increases the velocity by three. Nine plus three is 12. At t equals three seconds, the velocity in the y direction is now 12 meters per second. Checking the velocity in the z direction, it starts at six, and then for one second it accelerates at a rate of one meter per second squared. Six plus one gives an ending velocity in the z direction of seven meters per second. And now let's find the position vector at t equals three seconds. To do this, we will focus on the velocity over this time period, which is 10 meters per second in the x direction, 12 meters per second in the y direction, and seven meters per second in the z direction. And the starting position is the position at t equals two seconds, which is 30 meters in the x direction, 20 meters in the y direction, and 14 meters in the z direction. So the starting x position is 30 meters. And then for the next one second, the velocity in the x direction is 10 meters per second, which increases the position in the x direction by 10. 30 plus 10 is 40. At t equals three seconds, the position in the x direction is 40 meters. The y position starts at 20 meters. And then for the next second, the velocity in the y direction is 12 meters per second which increases the position by 12 in the y direction. 20 plus 12 is 32. At t equals three seconds, the position in the y direction is 32 meters. Checking the z component, the starting position in the z direction is 14 meters. And then the velocity is seven meters per second in the z direction for one second, which increases the position in the z direction by seven. 14 plus seven is 21. At t equals three seconds, the z position is 21 meters. And now let's complete the row for t equals four seconds. Over this one second time period, the acceleration in the x direction is one meter per second squared. In the y direction, it's four meters per second squared. In the z direction, it's zero meters per second squared. And the starting velocity is the velocity at t equals three seconds, which in the x direction is 10 meters per second in the y direction is 12 meters per second, and the z direction is seven meters per second. The starting velocity in the x direction is 10. For the next second, the acceleration in the x direction is one meter per second squared, which increases the velocity by one. 10 plus one is 11. At t equals four seconds, the
the velocity in the x-direction is 11 meters per second. The starting velocity in the y-direction is 12 meters per second. For the next second, the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared, which increases the velocity by 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. The velocity is 16 meters per second in the y-direction. And just checking the velocity in the z-direction, it starts at 7. For the next second, the acceleration is 0, which does not change the velocity. The velocity remains 7 meters per second in the z-direction. And now let's find the position vector at t equals 4 seconds. Over this one second time period, the velocity in the x direction is 11 meters per second. In the y direction, it's 16 meters per second. In the z direction, it's 7 meters per second. And the starting position is the position at t equals 3 seconds, which is 40 meters in the x direction, 32 meters in the y direction, and 21 meters in the z direction. The x position starts at 40 meters. For the next second, the velocity is 11 meters per second which increases the x position by 11. 40 plus 11 is 51. At t equals four seconds, the x position is 51 meters. Focusing on the y position, it starts at 32 meters. For the next second, it increases by 16 meters per second. 32 plus 16 is 48. At t equals four seconds, the position in the y direction is 48 meters. And just checking the z component, or z position, Starts at 21, increases by seven for the next second. 21 plus seven is 28. And now it's finished by completing the row for t equals one second. For this one, we'll have to work backwards. Because we're working backwards, we will focus on the acceleration and velocity at t equals two seconds to help us determine the velocity vector at t equals one second. Let's look at the z component, which has already been completed for us. Notice how the velocity at t equals two seconds is six meters per second, and this was the result of an acceleration of zero over this one second time period, which means the starting velocity would have been the same of six meters per second. Now looking at the velocity in the x direction, notice how it ends here at eight meters per second, which is a result of having an acceleration of three meters per second squared for one second which means the previous velocity in the x direction would have had to have been three less than eight. Eight minus three is five. So at t equals one second, the velocity in the x direction is five meters per second. Again, checking this, the initial velocity is five meters per second. After an acceleration of three meters per second squared for one second, the ending velocity is eight meters per second. For the velocity in the y direction, Notice how it ends at nine meters per second after an acceleration of one meter per second squared for one second. And therefore the starting velocity would have to be nine minus one, which is eight meters per second in the y direction. Again, eight plus one does give us nine. And now let's find the position vector at t equals one second. To do this, we will focus on the velocity at t equals two seconds as well as the position at t equals two seconds. Let's first verify where this eight came from for the position in the z direction. Notice how at t equals two seconds, the position in the z direction is 14 meters, and that was the result of having a velocity of six meters per second for one second. Notice 14 minus six gives us eight, which must be the position in the z direction at t equals one second. To check, again, eight plus six equals 14. Now let's find the position in the x direction at t equals one second. Well at t equals two seconds, the position was 30 meters. This was after one second of a velocity of eight meters per second. And therefore the starting position in the x direction would have to be 30 minus eight, which is 22 meters. Checking this, 22 plus eight does give us 30. And now for the position in the y direction, at t equals two seconds, the position in the y direction is 20 meters, but this is after one second of having a velocity of nine meters per second, and therefore the starting position would have had to have been nine less than 20. 20 minus nine is 11. The position in the y direction is 11 meters at t equals one second. Again, checking this, if the position starts at 11, and then for one second it increases by nine, the result is 20. I hope you found this helpful.